I've only gone and bought myself a new toy train and the law of the internet says apparently I'm not allowed to take it out of its box in the privacy of my own modeling salon. I have to uh, take it out of its box on a camera and post the results on the web. Now, okay, um, the um, B4 tank loco has been out for a very long while from Dapol, and uh, that's because, I know this, because um, I was able to buy this one very, very cheaply. I think I'd pay, it was just under 80 quid from Hans, and uh, to be honest, it's a loco I've wanted for a while because I quite fancy it for Melbridge Dock many years ago and uh, I actually looked at buying a kit because there was supposed to be a kit came out the guy spoke to the guy he was in the middle of developing it and he said he generously would have taken some money off me as a prepayment fortunately I declined and that's good because the kit never ever appeared so Dapol have um, done a ready to run version which is great because it costs about the same as the kit would have cost me and uh, it means I don't have to do quite so much work Right, let's see. Let's look at the box. It's a good stout cardboard box. Yes, that's good. Um, it says Dapol on one end. It says um, it's got a barcode on the other. I've gone for the Southern Wartime Black. And the reason for that is quite simple because what I want is I want a BR Loco and BR Locos weren't in the offer. So, good stout box. Let's take the top off the box. And inside we have an owner's manual. Is that like a Haynes owner's manual? Oh, thank you for purchasing this Dapol model. Quick start, blah, blah, blah. Some stuff, how to take it to pieces, um, owner's guide. Um, quite like the look of that, where you've got all the um, all the parts listed. That's quite, that's quite nice. And uh, yeah, tells you what all the bits are, the warranty, blah, blah, blah. And uh, yeah, okay, that's nice. Foam top to the box. What's in the box, you say? That's what's in the box. What's in the box is more foam and the uh, fairly now standard clamshell packing. Let's have the a bit of foam won't go off my fingers. Take the outer sleeve off. Don't recognise the so funny little straight bar couplings. I actually wonder if they if they would work with um, Spratt and Winkles. Anyway, we're not going to be using those. Undo the, uh, undo that. There's the bit of polythene, and there we have it. A nice shiny new loco. Now, I understand that these are reasonably accurate. They certainly are probably as good as I would have built as a kit. Probably a good deal better actually. Uh, and there we have it in the uh, Southern Railway uh, colours which will be really, really easy with a bit of T-cut to remove and replace with a BR crest. Uh, it's a Southern Loco, so there's no um, smoke box door number plate, which is something else I'll have to add when I do this. And if I'm honest, the first impressions are, it's very, very smooth paint, um, perhaps a touch plasticky, but you know what? I can live with that because I don't think that's going to be an issue. Once it's got a bit of weathering on it, it's going to be great. Um, buffers are sprung, spring, spring, spring. That's very nice. Um, lots of cab detail in there and quite a, it's a very nice looking little loco. I'm very pleased. Let's put it on the track. Right, the loco is now on a piece of Pico Code 7500 track. Looks good. The first test is, let's give it a dose of nine volt battery and see what happens. It moves. And nine volt battery turned around. You will notice of course this is the DC model because DCC is utterly evil and pointless. So uh, it runs very nice and smoothly. I have to say annoyingly smoothly because I'm flipping sure if I built a kit it wouldn't work anything like as well as that so there we go uh, my next job really is to uh, find uh, the find the book and uh, see what I'm going to need to do to do something with this uh, model more details of which will be on my blog which is philsworkbench.co.uk in the near future